barely had the first chaos came to be. But next, wide-bosomed earth, the ever sure foundations of all the deathless ones who hold the peaks of snowy Olympus, and dim Tartarus in the depth of the wide path earth, and Eros, fairest among the deathless gods, who unnerves the limbs and overcomes the mind and wise counsels of all gods and all men within them. Hesiod, Theogony. Throughout the entirety of Greek civilization, it seems that chaos is agreed upon as being the very first being in creation. Chaos, like the other primordial deities, is both a place and a person. Chaos has existed since the beginning and will continue to exist until the end. It is not only the gaping and endless void that surrounds everything else, but the entity Chaos is also the mother of Nyx, night, and Erberus, darkness, and out of Chaos sprung the primordial deities, Gia, earth, Tartarus, the underworld, and Eros, love. It was Eros that allowed Chaos and Gia to eventually have their own children. Chaos is the starting and end point of Greek mythology. And so, we will start our investigation into Greek mythology by examining chaos. Before we get any further into today's episode, I just want to quickly ask that you subscribe and like if you enjoy my content. It really helps the channel out and it motivates me to make more content. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. A very important aspect of Greek mythology to understand is that deities, most especially the primordial deities, are not just gods or goddesses and do not just have a human form, but are also their respective domains. Chaos is not then just a female deity, but is also the actual physical void that surrounds Earth, the underworld, and all that has been and ever will be. As we heard from the brief mention from Hesiod at the beginning of the video, Chaos was the first being to ever exist, and Chaos lived alone for a time, an infinite but lonely being. At some point, however, Three other beings came into existence, those being Gia, Tartarus, and Eros. It is unclear exactly how these beings came into existence. Hesiod seems to believe that Chaos did not directly give birth or create these beings. Instead, they came or grew out of the void. The void of Chaos is most equivalent to how we view empty space. When we look up into the night sky, we see stars, and even the other planets around us but we also see a great inky blackness surrounding the dots of light. That is chaos, the void of nothingness that surrounds the material world. It is where our material world comes from, and it is where it will eventually return. Yet chaos, unlike our sections of open space, is also filled with energy, and it was that energy that would eventually give rise to some of the most powerful beings and powers in our material world. Chaos herself loses much of her importance following the creation of the other deities, as we have almost no mention of the deity in the rest of our written record of Greek mythology. In fact, the only other mentions of the deity we get are in the form of passing references. Hesiod tells us that Chaos is in between the earth and where the titans dwell following their defeat, which would make sense as Chaos surrounds all of creation, and thus it is not surprising that it is also between the material realms. We are also told that during Zeus's great battle with his father, Kronos, spoiler alert by the way, that even chaos is gripped by the extreme heat caused by Zeus's lightning bolts. And that's it really, save for one other mention. We are told that chaos directly birthed two beings, Erberus, darkness, and Nyx, night. These two children would go on to give birth to more deities, such as Nemesis, retribution, Hypnos, sleep, Thanatos, death, Geras, old age, Eris, strife, Chiron, the boatman who brought the souls of the dead to the gates of the underworld, Aether, upper air breathable by only the gods, Himera, day, and the Morai, the fates. These are fundamental forces of creation, and each is traced back to chaos herself. That is really all the times that chaos is mentioned. Yet we can pull some important aspects of Greek culture from the story of chaos. The first is the obvious understanding that creation, gods, light, and pretty much everything else that we can see, feel, or understand, must have a place to originate in, 
and a place to exist in. Chaos provides that place. Chaos is the blank canvas that creation would come to populate. It is the foundation of creation. This also kind of explains why we don't hear much about chaos. It would seem to the Greeks that she was absent in their normal lives. Chaos was a distant place that humans could not interact with, so it is understandable why the Greeks would not focus all that much on chaos. The second is the way that the Greeks viewed themselves in the grand scheme of things. One aspect of Greek mythology that is present throughout all the myths and stories is that there are levels to creation. We have the obvious levels in the order of the various realms. The heavens are at the top, then earth, then the underworld, and then Tartarus. This reflects a final separation of creation. Humans are meant to interact with the earth and the underworld, not chaos and not Tartarus. Chaos reflects the ultimate distance from humans. It is the realm that is so far away from our existence that it holds no real importance over us. Chaos is an overarching creator who, while being the ultimate creator of all, is content with staying back and watching as her creation unfolds. Sound familiar? It's actually interesting how close this seems to be to our modern idea of monotheism, a creator out of whom everything and everyone else can find its origins, who is content with simply staying back and watching creation unfold. Of course, the Greeks would not have thought of chaos in such a manner, as they were concerned with the rulers of their realm, the gods themselves. And yet, I cannot stop my brain from thinking that maybe, just maybe, chaos is the true ruler of all. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Chaos, despite not having much written about her, is one of the most important deities in Greek mythology. She is the primogenitor, who has been in existence since the beginning, and will be in existence until the end. It was from her and her realm that all other aspects of creation came into existence, and her realm surrounds all. She is the foundation of Greek mythology, and it is fitting that she was the object of our first episode. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. This is a little shorter than normal videos, but there's really not much on chaos. This is the first in our new series examining Greek mythology, and I hope I've laid a solid foundation for the rest of our examination. We are going to be conducting this series in a fairly chronological order. So next up is the other primordial deities. If you have any comments or questions on the video or believe I've made a mistake, please comment down below. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. It really helps the channel out. Peace.